Hey, and welcome back to Integrated Science. I'm Miss Sparks, and um, today we're going to continue talking about Newton's three laws of motion. Uh, we're going to mostly focus in today on Newton's second law, which doesn't have a nice, fun, little catchy saying like Newton's first law. So if you remember from previously, we talked about Newton's first law, which is an object in motion stays in motion, an object rest stays at rest. And so we also use the term inertia to kind of help us discover um, how objects and forces can change how um, Newton's first law moves. So we're really going to focus in today on the force that an object can cause for an object to continuously to move, to making it an unbalanced force. And so Newton's second law, um, once again, doesn't have a catchy saying, but it does have an equation. And that's what we're gonna practice today. And then we're gonna kind of start talking about what happens when you have two objects that can collide, can collide and cause an impulse. So let me just move here. So, um, Probably need to change my picture there. He's no longer a patriot, is he? Um, but Newton's second law of motion kind of has to do with the idea, if you think about a game of football, um, there is a lot of forces acting on the field. So if you think about it, gravity is always acting on the field so the players aren't flying up into space. But you also have um, the force acting on bodies. So um, you have to have good muscle tone in order to run up and down the field to catch the ball to throw the ball, to tackle, all those types of things. So those are some types of forces that actually kind of play into Newton's second law. And then clearly there's also collisions that are occurring um, in the sport as well. So you have people tackling, uh, trying to defend others, um, and then you have your offense clearly trying to run. So Newton's second law of motion has an equation, which is um, we're going to use F equals MA. This is the Greek symbol for Cigna. Sometimes you see it on there in a true physics class. We're going to remove it just because we have so many equations. I'm going to try to keep them as simple as possible. So F stands for force and our M is for our mass, which we're going to measure in kilograms. And then our A is our acceleration, meters per second squared, which we talked about earlier with our motion. So the true definition of Newton's second law is just an object's acceleration is proportional to the net force acting upon it and inversely proportional to its mass. Two key terms there, proportional and inversely proportional. And those terms you've probably heard in an algebra class or another math class. So proportional means equal to and inversely means the opposite. So acting upon it inversely to its mass. So the heavier the object is, is going to change how the force is going to be affected as well as the acceleration. So we're gonna kind of look at that. What does it look like mathematically? And then we're going to really take a look at how if we change the mass of an object, is that gonna cause different types of um, actions with its acceleration. So um, one last thing here is force is measured in Newtons. And so we're gonna use the capital N. So I have it here on my, my whiteboard just so that you can kind of see force equals MA, and then there's our, our lovely T-chart. So hopefully you're getting used to using those and showing your work, which is extremely important when we uh, move forward here. So um, today you'll start to see that some of the equations will piggyback off of each other, meaning that I might leave acceleration blank and you might have to go back and use speed to find acceleration and then acceleration to help them find the force. So they are all kind of linked together. I like to think about our equations that we use in here as the Olympic rings are all connected somewhat. So um, let's just take a, a quick look. So this is another slide very similar to what we just talked about there again. So there's our equation. Uh, force is measured in newtons, and you can see that one newton equals one kilogram times one meter per second squared. And we're going to kind of use this to our advantage here because your body is actually a machine itself that creates acceleration due to your mass and a force acting on it. And so you'll see that as we kind of move forward and do a couple of different practice problems and make some observations where you can write down some qualitative and quantitative information. So uh, Newton's second 
second law of motion, um, the unbalanced force acting on object equals the object's mass times acceleration, another way to reword that. These are really important concepts, so please make sure in your notes you get these down and star them, underline them, highlight them, whatever you have to do. These are going to be two really big underlying concepts to help us kind of describe qualitatively Newton's second law. The first one says force increases acceleration. So the more you push down on something or the more pressure or the more push you give something, it's going to cause it to accelerate. So think about you standing on a skateboard. Skateboarding seems to be super in, at least in my neighborhood. I feel like everyone has gotten a skateboard since quarantine and has been riding it. So um, think about if you're at the top of the hill and you just release yourself and you're standing on the skateboard, you're going to clearly go down. But let's say I'm standing behind you and I give you a big push you are going to accelerate much differently as opposed to just gravity forcing on pushing on you. So those forces are going to increase or change that acceleration. Mass is going to decrease the acceleration. So let's say that I have you and your friend on a skateboard and I push you. I'm going to have to give you a much bigger push to get you going even faster because there's more mass on the um, skateboard. So we're going to look at this several different ways. I like to use uh, roller coasters. So we will talk a little bit about roller coasters and thinking about like just think about Kings Island in general, the different types of roller coasters that are there between the metal ones and the wood ones. And if you think about the cart of the Banshee versus the cart of um, Orion, the new one, what's different between those that can cause different types of uh, accelerations and the mass is going to be dominant on that. So let's take a look at how to kind of set up one of our equations here. So uh, this here is danger mouse. Very clever name. And um, he steals a large piece of cheese by rolling it across the floor with a force of five newtons. So that's important piece of information. There's our newtons there. So that's going to tell you that's our force. Um, if the cheese weighs 50 kilograms, there's its mass, what is the acceleration? So there's our question there. So let's think about, once again, our equation is F equals mass times acceleration. And so if we draw our T chart out, oops, this doesn't give me much room on this slide, sorry, mass and acceleration. Let's just plug in, and this one we're going to have to work kind of backwards. So provided the force, 5 newtons, we know the mass is 50 kilograms. I'm running off my slide, and there we go. We don't know our acceleration. So I'm going to write on the cheese here. So let's plug it into our equation. So 5 newtons equals our mass, which is 50 kilograms. That is terrible. You get the idea, though, hopefully. And our acceleration. So algebraically, we want to solve for x. And in doing that, we're just going to do the opposite. So it's asking us to multiply over here. So in order to find x, we do the opposite and divide each side by 50. I'm going to take that line was purpose and brought it over here. So our 50 cancels out over here. So now we're just going to take 5 and divide it by 50, which gives us 0.1 newtons. I'm sorry, 0.1 meters per second squared. I'm finding acceleration. Sorry, I just totally went blank there. So, and if we plug it back in, it should give us a good value there. So, uh, 0.1 equals times 50 is going to give us 5 newtons. So, you can plug it back in there to kind of double check yourself. Let's take a look at another one. So, this one here says um, a zookeeper lifts a stretcher that holds a sedated lion. The total mass of the lion's stretcher is 157 kilograms. So, there's its mass. And the upward acceleration of the line in the stretcher is 0.657 meters per second squared. So this time they've given us the acceleration and they want to know what is the force here. So once again, F equals 
MA. I'm not going to write the equation down. Let's just fill in our t-chart to kind of help keep things straight. There's that really annoying line again. Come back. I don't remember what color I have now. Um, okay, good. So our mass is 175 kilograms. And the acceleration is point zero, sorry, zero point six five seven meters per second squared. And we do not know the force here. So this one's a little bit more straightforward. So x equals, we're going to plug in our mass, which is the 175. kilograms and we're going to multiply that by 0.657 meters per second squared. Kind of a fast process there. Strong people. So then all we're going to do is multiply these two together. So you're going to take 175 and multiply it by 0.657. And when you type that into your calculator, you should get um, 114. And I believe I rounded this just a little bit 0.98. And that is its force that is being applied to our line. So that's going to be in Newtons. There's that crazy line again. So this one was a little bit more straightforward. Just once again, plugging in our information, helping us solve for um, the actual force of the object. Same thing here. Um, we can see that this one here is asking us to push a friend, kind of like the idea that I had with the skateboard. So I'm going to let you set this one up here. So pause the video and see if you can find the answer. And that's going to be one of our checkpoints. Um, so it says you push a friend on a sled. Your friend and the sled together have a mass of 70 kilograms. If the net force on a sled is 35 newtons, what is the sled's acceleration? So you're looking for the acceleration. So pause the video here, see if you can solve for that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the next one, which we're gonna talk about too. And these are gonna be your two kind of challenge questions um, for today. So this one here is another practice problem, but now we're kind of layering in a couple of different pieces of information. So I want to take a few minutes to kind of talk about this. So let's just read the question first. So it says, Sally is getting ready for the 2016 Summer Olympics. She's time traveled back to the past. Um, if she has a mass of 58 kilograms and starts a 100 meter practice trial with a time of 10 seconds, what is her net external force acting on her? We're looking for her force, net external forces. So let's think about our givens. I'm going to help you out here with a little bit. So this is where the T chart comes into super easy mode because then you can just say, here are what I know. So we know we want to find force. <clears throat> and if we go back and look, they've given us 58 kilograms. But that's it. We need, we still want to find force. We know we're going to be solving for this guy right here. Ah, that line. But how can we find acceleration? So this is where I was talking about that you have to kind of go back and rethink about some other equations that could really be helpful. So what do we know? We know 100 meters, that's a distance, and 10 seconds, that's a time. So there is an equation that we used already that can give us distance divided by time and then that can be plugged into another equation to help find our acceleration. So think speed, distance divided by time, solve for that, 
and then plug that into your acceleration equation and see if you can solve. And then think about what are the relationships and then what are you looking for with the solution practices. So take a minute and try it.